Here's your quick start guide to using the skew function on Affinity Designer for the iPad. We're going to start off with something nice and simple. Uh, we can also use it for text and then we'll finish off. I'll show you what I use it for on this uh, illustration of this Nissan Cube I'm working on. So let's start with something simple. Let's draw out a shape and I'll show you the new way of doing this. So if I pick up the move tool, you can grab these uh, anchor points and you can manipulate the shape and the uh, command controller will give you a few options that will lock the aspect ratio and this one will give you symmetry and this one will give you uh, it'll lock the aspect ratio and give you rotation but what I found is uh, to skew the object which is what I'm trying to do I want to make it like a polygon shape rather than click on the anchor points if you just click on an area of the screen just past the anchor point, not too far out, or else you'll miss it not too far in, uh, you'll pick up the anchor point somewhere about there. You can skew. Now, I think they've done a pretty good job of hiding this because there's no real indication that that exists. And it does make me wonder what else can this do? What other shortcuts are there um, that I don't know about? So let's move on to something a little bit more complex. Uh, it's the same technique, but um, there's a bit more involvement with it. I've been working on this Nissan Cube illustration. Uh, I took some individual pictures of the badges because uh, from the, the main shot, you can't quite get into the detail. Uh, it's a bit pixelated. So let me just hop over to the original picture I took. So that's the... That's the photo with the um, vector trace over the top. So let's just move the photograph out of the way to leave us with the vector. So uh, yeah, you can work on individual layers. I think it's easier to group everything together because when it's on a, um, it's, it's okay like this because you can use the move tool and select everything. But if you're on um, an illustration, you may find that you're picking up other bits uh, in the background that you don't want. So I tend to think it's easier to group it all together. Um, so let's just do that now. And then move till selected, you can come in and grab these uh, invisible anchor points and you can skew it in the same way. And just before I end the video, there is another way I better show you because I know I'm gonna get comments uh, if I don't do this, it's going to be, why don't you use perspective warp down? And let me show you what happens when I use that. So let's just select our group again from the uh, layers panel. And then we can turn on perspective by using this icon here in the middle. Let's select perspective. Now this should work perfectly. This is exactly what it's, it's for. But um, if I select two nodes, let's select this N2 and then move this down so it gives you a skew. Look what happens to my drawing. If I come down, it goes dark. And if I come up to the top, it goes clear. And that's because to get the chrome effect on the uh, badge, I use transparency, which is um, just behind the gradient. And it, it obviously puts like a mask in. So as I move that around the screen, it's, uh, showing the mask through the uh, the badge there. So that is why I can't use perspective on this one. Uh, I think on a solid color, it won't matter, but for badges, for me, it ain't gonna work.